Mascot Towers owners urged to sell, facing a potential 80% loss. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Steiner coffee because it looks like the Mascot Towers saga is continuing, but it may come to an end for the owners of this beleaguered building. And I, I feel real sorry for the people that have been put in this situation, to be quite honest. So Mascot Towers owners urged to sell as developers express interest in demolishing the block. Demolishing the whole thing and rebuilding it. So let's let's have a look at this. Now, Mascot Towers, we've been following this for quite some time on the channel. Uh, I think over a year now. And they were all, you know, evacuated. And it's just been an ongoing issue with cracking and issues with the building. We've gone through pretty much every article that has come out about it, discussed it, you know, done some digging and found some information like the dilapidation report, which I want to talk about. But for those of you that aren't aware, uh, there was cracking fears in the building and they, people were evacuated, given very little time, had to get out. And it's Mascot Towers is here in Sydney, near the airport. And what I have dubbed, and I'll just trace over this here, what I've dubbed the Triangle of Fail from Sugar Cube to Mascot to Zetlands in this area here where we're seeing more and more issues with building and construction and I mean there was a real overheating of a lot of the construction in in Sydney you know years ago and a lot of that went into multi-res because they're pretty close to the to the CBD in the city proper now all of this area here near the, near the um, near the airport it is all contaminated land so there's all this this contaminated groundwater leaching down to botany bay it was all industrial so there's a lot of issues there and mascot isn't alone with some of the problems they've got everyone not by a long stretch and i here is the building you can see i mean it's a multi-res building and it extends for a significant portion of the block there's hundreds of units here you know a lot of people that need to need to agree you've got the residential units then you've got the commercial properties as well i mean they were given just before I think Christmas Eve or Easter they were threatened to shut down at the drop of a hat too so it's not a nice situation for anyone involved so they're facing a potential 80% loss everyone let's have a look at what the ABC has to say here mascot towers ur owners urged to sell as developers express interest in demolishing the beleaguered block I mean maybe that's the best thing maybe that's it you cut your losses and you're gone i i can't imagine how much stress this would have been for people for all this time still ongoing you know, you've got this property you can't buy it and you can't do anything who's going to buy it off you no one someone will have to buy the whole thing owners of apartments in the troubled mascot towers building have been advised it is no longer financially viable to fix the building and that their best option is to sell up so just think about that, how much money they've poured into it, all the engineering fees and reports. I was talking to, to one gentleman who's working on, on some of these projects down there. It, it'd be gut-wrenching. At a meeting on Thursday night, owners were told several developers are interested in buying the building with a view to demolishing it and rebuilding from scratch. Chair of the Mascot Town, Towers Owners Corporation, Gary Diggan, told the ABC, the only solution in our mind is to sell the building off. We have lost a lot of money. We have to decide whether we're going to continue to lose money or to try and recover some. This is the thing, you've got the sunk cost fallacy. There are people who think, oh, I've, I've spent so much money, I've borrowed so much money, we've spent so much trying to repair this, let's just keep going, get it done. Maybe you've got to cut your losses sometimes. Oh, this, this is not a good story. Almost two, two years, wow since re this has been going on for two years nearly it's almost two years since residents were evacuated from the 10-story buildings 132 apartments after cracks were found in the basement since then they have not been able to live in the building and nine owners of commercial premises on the ground floor have also been locked out on safety grounds during the meeting in marubra the mascot towers owners corporation told owners that in the event of a sale going ahead they should expect to take a loss of around 70 to 80 percent so someone who for example paid one million dollars for their apartment would receive 200 to 300 thousand from the sale undoubtedly there will be bankruptcies 
he said. So imagine that. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people would have gotten into, into mascot, like retirees, downsizers, sold the family home, moved into the city, bought a little place. All your money has gone in there. Maybe you got a bit set aside. But even if you go bankrupt, I mean, at least you get the bloody anchor off your back. What can you do? You're, you're stuck in a limbo. But the longer we do it, the more money we'll lose. Tracy Sheehan bought a three-bedroom penthouse apartment with city views for 900000 in 2014. She supports the proposal to sell off. It would be mad not to do the collective sale, she said. People are absolutely suicidal. For the past two years, she's been living in rental accommodation with her four-year-old son. We've moved five times since we were evacuated, she said. She said the entire ordeal has left her suffering from depression. Yeah, well, bloody hell it would. What's the Australian dream all about? You have a $1.3 million property that's worth zero, and that's your life savings. The owner's corporation has been told it will cost $38 million to fix the building which will blow out to $64 million, including interest over the course of a 15-year loan. It means a three-bedroom unit owner will be paying $2,000 a week for 15 years. That's after you've paid your mortgage off. Another two grand for 15 years. He said the escalating costs had left many unable to meet repayments. You can't have a situation where some owners can't pay and others are supposed to foot the bill, he said. In the event of sale, the money will be used to pay off the $16 million debt the owners corporation has incurred so far in trying to fix the building. They've incurred $16 million trying to fix this thing. Well, what can you say? This is, this is terrible. The balance would then be distributed among owners depending on the size of their property. If you vote yes now and get 100% over the line, that's what they need. They need 100% of the people, of the owners, to vote yes. We can get at least some think out of the wreck, he said. We've waited 18 or 12 or 18 months. It just means we've got millions of dollars of costs which come out of everyone's pocket. So, Fabian de Santos supports the sale even though it will send him bankrupt yeah i mean mate i uh, you want to get out of this you want this bloody n weight off you i can completely understand that imagine the stress these poor people are going through he bought a two-bedroom apartment for 950 grand just months before residents were told it was not safe to stay oh no that's even worse that, that's, you know, someone buying in 2014, okay, they've been in the building there some time. If you just bought just before this happened, imagine the person who sold it to him. They, they're probably ecstatic, happy, so lucky, but just going in, so unlucky. He supports the sale, even though for him, with a mortgage of 900 grand, it will mean financial ruin. This is going to push me to bankruptcy, he said. But we 100% have to sell. Pretty much the only way out is to sell and try to move on. For the sale to go ahead, it will need the support of all 141 owners. Mr. DeSantos said he thought that was unlikely, as the meeting was pretty divided. Oh, it's, this is going to be a nightmare. This is the problem of when you're in these, these, these little corporations, these body corporates. You've got to get 100% agreement. That's, well, is that even possible? He said he would campaign to convince other owners to support the sale. If we don't take this opportunity, we can't sell within 12 months. Owners have two weeks to consider the proposal before it is put to a vote at the annual general meeting. Two weeks, guys. What would you do? Would you sell? Now, I want to draw your attention to a, well, a dilapidation report that was done by the developer next door. Now, this was done, sadly, a few years before Fabiano bought in. And it's something that I think we should all t uh, take away a lesson to look out for, to try and find some information. If you're looking at buying something, even when you get a, a building and pest inspection, sometimes they, don't e they only inspect the apartment. They don't, don't inspect the plant room. They don't inspect the basement. 
They don't go online to search through council records. Do your lawyers do that? You've got to do that yourself. Because these people don't, they don't, they're, you know, sure they're professionals and they have a duty of care, but they're not going to care as much as you do about your own investments. And I did a video going through this dilapidation report that came out from 2017. This was, I found it on the town plan because there was a development next door. And if you're developing a property or doing any construction work of, of really any significance, you need to go and do a, a existing condition reports around your neighboring buildings so that they can't claim that you damaged their property through your work. Uh, or if they do, you've got evidence going, well, okay, maybe that happened, but look at all this here that was already in place. And I mean, that was around, it was showing, this is the cracking that they always show in the media. It's been there since 2017, guys. You know, when they're showing, oh, cracking, and you see this dramatic footage, it's been there for years. So you've you've got to keep that in mind. If you want to go through that in any greater detail, I I will link to the video I've done. I'll just look at the look at on the, the uh, Mascot Towers playlist, guys. We go through the whole thing. And just to draw your attention to it, some people don't even know these things exist. For those of us in the construction game, sure, we're used to this stuff, but it's not common knowledge. So some solutions to this. Uh, and... I mean, for the for the owners of the tower, I I, I mean, I I would sell honestly. I'd want I'd want it gone. I just want the stress gone from my life. I wouldn't care anymore, and build up again. Try and find a way rather than just dragging it on any longer. It's it's a nightmare. I mean, I've got I've got the image of this guy right here. I mean, look at him, poor lad. But what I think we need to for like. From a profession and construction point of view, we need to move away from design and construction for residential apartments or residential buildings. Everyone. Okay, we need to move away from DNC. Because, well, that, that creates these situations of potential conflict of interest. Where you've got the people who are preparing um, the documentation, taking responsibility for it all. Uh, the, the, you know, the traditional... The issue is fundamentally the traditional policeman of the industry, the architect and the certifier could be directly employed for the builder. And then your pipeline of future work is dependent on maintaining that relationship. And that can potentially compromise your ability to advise of issues. You know, I've done it on jobs, lost a client, lost work. If you have to, yeah, and that's an issue, everyone. That's the problem with it. I've got a big issue with design and construct for residential, for buildings people sleep in, for a mine out in the end of nowhere, particularly if, if you've got a company that's going to, you know, run it up for a year and then hand it over. That's a little different to a developer that set up a proprietary limited company that they can just destroy and walk away. So that's the issue I have with that. And we need to make people aware of this procurement method and the issues associated with it. I wouldn't say it's the best solution for apartments, particularly because you've got people buying in that want a long-term asset. Okay, a developer wants to minimize costs so they can just ship the product. But an owner of a, a building wants to have something with no issues, with easy maintenance, that, that's going to be robust and reliable for years to come. And best way is to make people aware of it. That, that's what I'm advocating for. Because you're seeing here, I mean, there'll be calls for more government intervention. And this is an article that's just come out that we'll go through in another video. You know, the commission are powerless to help women at the center of a, a defects debacle. I haven't even read it yet. But a lot of, you know, people were calling for more government intervention. Uh, you know, a commissioner for this, 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 this. You know, it, it's, it can, in some ways it can be a bit of theater or it can be so slow it's not going to make a difference. That's where, you know, instantly public awareness of the industry going to developers, you know, developer advertising, traditional procurement, or, you know, a tri-certification model. That, that's what I'm arguing for to reduce corruption, where, you know, you have a certifier that represents the interests of the builder. You've got a certifier that represents the interests of the neighbor, and then you have a third one. So they have to agree upon all things. You know, oh, is it, that won't be a significant cost against the whole value of a project having these three people working on a job. But it will also, I, I would see it's a marketing point of difference. You know, three certification guarantee, corruption reduced. Uh, you, you, there'd be a way to spin it. But we need to look at new methods because getting three people, three dodgy certifiers coming together is going to be very difficult, a lot harder than one dodgy one. And there's because there's buildings in Sydney where it's, it's have been dodgy guys doing it. 
I also think we need to have consumer education. We need to bring back clerk of works, the clerk of works, clerk or clerk of works. Yeah, old an old dude wandering around the site, keeping an eye on everything and reporting back to the to the owners of what's going on on the site. That needs to be uh, returned because that is a, a point of difference as well, and it needs to be marketed to people. This is what we're doing to ensure that we're providing you quality. Because not all buildings are, are terrible, guys. But I, I tell you personally, I, I would be steering away from apartments <laughs> at the moment. So what I want to draw your attention to, if you want to learn a little bit more about these suggestions, one is a video I've done, Did Design and Construct Fail Opal? You can find that on my YouTube channel. Check that one out to just you know, learn a little bit more about the design and construct, construction process and some issues I have with it. And then solving corruption in the construction industry. This is where I, I talk about, among other things, the idea of having multiple certifiers on a job to try and address it. These are two suggestions I would put forward. Then the, the third, uh, Clark of Works, well, talk to any old guy who has been in the game. You know, that's a lost art. You, know, you, need, you need someone there to supervise it because a lot of the trades are letting, letting it down. And that's, well, that's got a lot of issues to do with what's going on there. Overheating of the market, unqualified people being brought into the country to do the work, language issues. That's a whole other topic. Anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. Would you sell? Would you sell? It's sad. I feel sorry for these people. If you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content, there's a few ways you can support us. You can watch the channel. You can support us on YouTube or Patreon. You can use any of our affiliate links you find down below from Amazon, Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can help us with our share investments by signing up for Stake or for signing up for Self Wealth. You can support us by buying our merch from Heiser Says. You can see the pocket squares that Rachel just made or by using Teespring. You can use Gold Pass for the preppers and the gold fans from Perth Mint, although I, right now no one's trusting the synthetic stuff at the moment, and I don't blame you, or you can use PayPal. Take care, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.